And here we are, another Friday night, another weekend upon us in the threat of more of those dangerous street takeovers. That is LAPD now launching a desperate investigation targeting one of the takeovers that hit the streets last weekend, a takeover that may have left a couple of the bystanders dead. Vehicles are now sitting in tow yards around the city like these. Police say that these were involved in illegal street takeovers that they broke up. And now police are hoping to make drivers think twice about participating by hitting them in their pockets and by taking away their cars. Out on camera, street takeovers in South LA, and there were more than just dangerous donuts. Take a look. This fight broke out around 1 this morning at Manchester Boulevard and Hooper Avenue after two cars collided. And in another car, a man is seen standing, waving two handguns. There was a large police presence there. When officers started to break things up, someone throws an illegal commercial firework. It's unknown if any arrests were made. Are we really witnessing the death of car culture as we know it? Friday night, LAPD bracing for even more street takeovers. But this dramatic one last weekend in South LA is now the center of a growing and urgent investigation. Two of the, two of the females that are struck appear to be in their early 20s, um, late teens, and one of them appears to be real, uh, severely injured. Street takeovers and racing are a huge problem in many areas. Police announced that a crackdown happened. You can see photos of cars being towed away. Residents have complained about illegal street takeovers and reckless driving in Harbor Gateway, Compton, and Angelino Heights, just to name a few neighborhoods. After a 7-Eleven store was trashed and looted during a takeover in Harbor Gateway area, LAPD gave a public warning that they would take aggressive action to put a stop to this activity. An hour earlier, hundreds of spectators circling the intersection of Avalon Boulevard and 102nd Street, one after another, drivers revving up and doing donuts. At one point, the crowd was so big, they blocked an ambulance responding to a call. It took police escorts to clear the intersections. With everybody driving their dad's 5.3 LS truck to takeovers and trucks closing down all across America, What's really left for car guys like us? When I say car guys, I literally mean guys that just love cars and everything that comes with it. If you ask me my personal opinion, I think it's time to make a change. I love the videos that come from takeovers just as much as the next guy. I've never actually been to one, but we have to start asking ourselves if we're damaging someone else's vehicle and if we're putting everybody's life at risk is it really worth that little bit of fun that little adrenaline hit that we get from those takeovers i mean don't get me wrong i love cars just as much as the next guy i know the highs of completing a motor swap i know the lows of blowing up that exact motor on the first drive <laughs> so if you love cars just as much as i do the culture itself is now going to make it harder on you to pursue being a car guy legally. Let me explain now what I mean by legally. When I say it's going to be hard for you to pursue legally, the issue is with everyone doing takeovers and no one taking their cars to the tracks because tracks are shutting down, now we're going to have an issue where every time law enforcement sees some type of customized vehicle, He's going to start either tailing it or he's going to pull it over for no reason to check, make sure everything is good on the car. And it's really because of car guys. And I'm, I'm a part of it as well. I love to do a donut right in a, in an open intersection. I'm not going to say I'm some saint. The issue is people's lives are becoming at risk now. And the police are feeling like the car culture itself is the reason for the risk to these lives. And we really need to get to changing that. Something has to be done along the lines of us dealing with ourselves internally to change this.
You guys might be asking yourselves, what the hell is the change that we need to make to get this thing back on track? Cars has been in my family and probably has been in your family for generations. Your grandfather probably loved them, your father probably loved them, and now you probably love them. The issue we're having is the, the hard pill for everyone to swallow is that the culture itself is being pretty much poisoned or pushed upon by enforcement. And what I mean by that is police. And the reason for that is car culture is now deeply woven within breaking the law. Everyone in their mind know, I'm not talking about that late night pull on the highway when you break the speed limit for a few seconds and you slow back down and cruise home. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about sliding out of a corner and then driving slowly where you gotta go like most of us always do. I'm not talking about that little slap on the wrist type of movement that we get when we do stuff with our cars that we like to do on an open street. What I'm talking about is when there's street racing and someone mows down a mother and a newborn and kills both of them. Cameron Heron was sentenced to 24 years in prison for killing a mother and her baby while racing on Bayshore Boulevard four years ago. That's what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is these takeovers where we have people being hit by the back of a car, probably doing 40, 50 miles an hour. The video shows this red car spinning, doing donuts, then swinging and slamming into two bystanders, sending them both flying right into the crowd. And we don't even know if the lady in the intro of this video is even alive or safe. That's what I'm talking about. If we're gonna force police to pursue us every time we hop in our sports car, what the hell do you guys think is gonna happen? They're gonna start putting more and more stricter laws, more cameras on the streets, um, more tracks are gonna shut down because they're gonna say the tracks are causing everyone want to take these race cars onto the highway. I'm sick of racetracks closing down because of HOAs and country clubs. You often hear non-car people tell us to take it to the track, and trust me, we have been trying to. In fact, we still try to, but it's getting harder and harder when more and more HOA MFs keep closing tracks down. We really gotta get this under control. We gotta start taking it to the track or being under more control when it comes to driving these vehicles, but something has to change. Car culture is so beautiful to me. Um, I do most of my own work on my vehicles here on the channel, and I drive every last one of my vehicles when they're running. <laughs> but it means so much to me because of what it does. You know, It allows me to have my freedom. It allows me to uh, learn to work on vehicles better. Uh, it just brings so much joy to my life and I hate to see it being shut down the way that it's being done. Alright guys, let's take a second and not even talk about takeovers anymore. Let's talk about car culture itself. Let's talk about Hellcats and 10-speed Mustangs. The evolution of what we've been seeing in the car culture is that there's no longer a priority on having to soup your car up, if we uh, would call it that, or to put performance parts in it to get it to a point of where it can race. If you can spend money and just buy a Hellcat or a 10-speed Mustang that's going to run 9s or 10s at the track all day from stock, it really disconnects between the driver and the car itself. Your car pretty much doesn't have a soul at this point, and I'm sorry if this pisses a lot of you guys off, but it's the truth. There's a massive difference between me and that goddamn plane that's making it hard for me to make this video. There's a massive difference between a guy that bought a Hellcat, a 10-speed Mustang, and me that bought a 03 Mustang GT with no engine in it, put my own engine together, bolted it into the car, and still made less than 300 horsepower to the wheels. The difference is the blood, sweat, and tears that it took to put it together shows discipline. It shows love for the car. It gives you a different sense of being. If you're just gonna take your cash, give it to someone, and they give you a 700 horsepower car, there can't be very much love. There can't be very much connect between driver and race car. 
And that disconnect is what I believe to be the biggest problem with our car culture. It really doesn't matter if your car has a hundred horsepower or if it has a thousand horsepower. Your car needs a soul. You got to be able to customize it. You got to make it your own. I understand all those guys that just get in the cars for one weekend, buy a nice vehicle, their engine blows on them, they get rid of it and they go and buy a Honda Accord. I know those type of guys. What I'm talking about is the guys that are going to be in it for life. I'm not saying you have to work on every car you own. What I am saying is you have to make these vehicles yours. You got to make them a part of who you are and whether it's the engine or the outside of the vehicle or the interior of the vehicle, you got to make it a part of you so that there's a healthy respect between you and the vehicle. I'm going to speak from a personal standpoint right now. If I can't swap the motor, paint up the valve covers, put a brand new clutch in it, uh, pretty much just work on the vehicle it seems to me like there's not going to be any attachment between me and that vehicle and I know a lot of you guys out there feel the exact same way so that's why I strongly believe that being able to customize your vehicle and also being able to make it your own it doesn't have to look like everybody else's own you can go down to Home Depot or Walmart and pick up some spray paint and spray paint it however you want you can put you can take it down to the body guy that's gonna charge you 10 grand, you know, to put the wide body kit on it and spray it. It doesn't matter really how you get it done. The, the real issue is when you go to drive these cars and they got a bunch of ABS and a bunch of uh, staring help, what are you really driving? Or is something driving you? I just spoke for a pretty long time on your American car culture and I don't even live in the country. I actually live in Freeport, Grand Bahama, which is a part of the Bahamas. So if I got your car culture wrong, make sure to let me know in the comments <laughs> because the only thing I'm really basing this off of is the amount of tracks that I've been seeing closing down and also the amount of social media clips with people flying through the freaking air after being hit by a car doing a takeover. <laughs> so let me know in the comments if I got any of this wrong. I'm definitely open to learn. I've actually never even been to the States and uh, I aspire to make it there this year to do some drifting. That's what we do here on the channel, but back to the video. All right, guys, if can't, mother the big three, nigga, it's just big me, nigga, bum. The song went holding me hostage for a little while, Dre, Jesus Christ. Drake, you gotta get this nigga out of here. All right, all right, guys, this is what you're gonna have to look forward to if we don't get this thing under control somehow. You're gonna look forward to not being able to actually pass down any car culture to your kids, to your nieces, to your nephews, to your cousins. You're, gonna, you're not gonna be able to get anyone into it. You know why? There's gonna be a stigma around this thing that it causes a lot of death. R driving itself, drifting itself, racing itself causes a lot of injury and a lot of harm if you don't do it in the correct way. No, I do not do it in the correct way before you guys come at me. And I'm gonna do my best to start cleaning that up. I'm gonna start putting cages in my vehicles. I'm gonna start putting brake upgrades in the vehicles, not just bigger motors. But we all have to chip in and get this thing done. You know why? Look into this if you guys don't believe me yourself. But if Teslas are gonna be the new car, if EVs are gonna be the new car, there's something that controls that EV. And if you're running from the police in something that is electronically controlled, you know what they're gonna do? What they're gonna do is, the same way they send out updates for your Tesla, they're gonna send out a signal, they're gonna send out some type of update that locks the car doors, drives you to the nearest police station, and you're gonna be in there until they deal with it properly, or they're gonna shut the vehicle off, pull it to the side of the road, and you're gonna be caught. You're, gonna, you're not gonna have the freedom or the choice to run from the police anymore because everyone's driving an electric vehicle. 
Right now, you can run a carbureted vehicle and you can do whatever the hell you want to do. Right now, they have things out there that can steal Hellcats in a matter of seconds, steal BMWs in a matter of seconds. The amount of criminal activity that is surrounded in our car culture is actually the reason why we're never going to be able to hand this beautiful thing down to our children. In this world of paying for horsepower, looks, and name brands, what's really still ours? And that question, I'm going to leave you with to explore your souls. Thank you guys so much for watching the video today. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Always remember, don't drift without your dreams. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. <laughs>